Hey guys, it's Dallas Schilling here from the Two Hour Circle and we are on the trail of one Captain Patrick Logan. So we've just been to Esk to visit a monument which describes the man as an enthusiastic explorer. He uh, was responsible for climbing and naming a lot of the hills around this area, uh, rivers, etc, etc. But now we've left Esk and we're on our way to Brisbane to have a look at one of the buildings that he had convicts build in his time. He must have been pretty special. He's got his name on everything. So this campground is just up the road from Esk. So we're here in Brisbane at a convict built building known as the Commissariat. This was built by Logan, or it was built by convicts under the construction of Logan. So Logan was actually a Scotsman. Arrived in Sydney in 1825. He stayed there for a period before he moved to Morton Bay, where he basically became in charge for a period of time. He was here for four years. Now, the men achieved an awful lot. One of those things was a reputation for being extraordinarily harsh. Alright, so what you're looking at here is actual convict irons or chains. Now, there's a display here um, on the windmill of Brisbane. Now, we're gonna do a two completely separate video on the windmill, but it's one of those places that earned Mr. Logan, or should I say Captain Logan, uh, his reputation as being quite harsh because of a thing called the treadmill. And we'll talk all about that in our next video. So this is the front of the building, or it would have been the front of the building back in the day. Um, the gates at the front there are indicative of that. And just over there is the Brisbane River. But let's talk about these bars here for a second. The bars on the window were not there to keep convicts in. I believe they were there to keep convicts out because this building was built for storage. So supplies and all kinds of things were locked up and kept in this building here. This beautiful old brick retainer wall would have been done by uh, convict stonemasons. And if you swing the camera around to the other side, you'll see that the um, label on the, on the date on the building, 1829. So we just managed to get this finished before someone bumped him off. Boy, did we go down the rabbit hole chasing information on this guy. So if you don't mind, I'm going to reference my notes. Here's what we took down. All right, so the man was born in Scotland in a little place called Berwickshire in South East Scotland. That happened in 1791. He arrived in Sydney on the 22nd of April, 1825, where his job was basically just to guard convicts. He was then reassigned and arrived in March, 1826, at Moreton Bay to look after the colony of convicts there. Now he was only in Queensland for about four years. Now in that time is when the man became most famous. All right, so the man was famous for two things. He was an enthusiastic explorer. He climbed mountains and he would often ride ahead of the pack. He was very much unstoppable, very enthusiastic. But he was most known and most infamous for being an absolute tyrant. So whilst he might have got his name on a lot of things in the surrounding regions, he was very much known as a tyrant and still very infamous for that this day. Now, some say he was killed in Ipswich. Now, back in the day, that was known as limestone. Now, Captain Logan would have been one of the very first people, if not the very first person, to set foot in limestone, which is now known as Ipswich. I believe that it's most likely he died out towards Mount Beppo, near Esk, all right? So part of the mystery, number one, where did he die? Part two of the mystery is who killed him? Now this is where it gets very, very interesting. On his final expedition, he was confronted probably a couple of times by the local indigenous folk, right? Now I reckon that provided the perfect alibi for anybody in the party or any in the party he was traveling with or anybody who may have known where he was likely to be to bump him off 
and make it look like he was bumped off by the local tribes. So prior to his untimely demise in 1830, he was meant to be jumping on a boat and heading off overseas to a new posting, possibly a promotion. Let's just say he never got there, but instead he ended up on a boat heading for Sydney in a lead lined coffin. So I'm entirely sure they decided to take the boat and not go by carriage to avoid those nasty speed cameras that you can see there on the map. So a month after he died, he was buried in Surrey Hills in Sydney. And that is where Captain Logan's story comes to an abrupt end. I'm Dallas Schilling. You've been watching the two hour circle and we'll see you somewhere out and about doing what we do. Bye now.